A synonym for neglect is to slight. Now isn't that, it's almost innocuous. A synonym for neglect is to disregard. A synonym for neglect is to fail to give proper attention. Let me tell you, as a preacher and a pastor for years, it has been my dubious privilege to deal with broken homes. And I want to tell you that more homes are torn up because of neglect than are torn up because of adultery. There are homes that are just misery. Nobody's fighting. Nobody's cussing. They just don't give proper attention. And that's one of the synonyms for neglect. If you love your wife, you got to give her some attention. If you love her, tell her. One man said to me, but I, I took for granted. Don't take for granted. Don't ask me why her mind needs to hear her. Tell her. And then show her. You don't have to bring home a Cadillac. Just bring home an apple. And she will garner from that that you were thinking about her. Just a small thing. But if you neglect her and you keep on doing it, then marriage becomes dull humdrum. And then she'll start to complain and nag. And then you'll get angry that she's doing that. And the first thing you know, you're at one another like that. Love is kind and love is long-suffering. Read 1 Corinthians 13. You ought to read it once a day. Marriage is not just hugging and kissing and thank the Lord it is that. But it's also scrubbing floors and going off to work and cooking beans and washing diapers. And if you don't have love in a home like that, the tension would get you to yelling at one another. You're in trouble. So we've got to be wise and we've got to be intelligent. Men are getters and women are givers. They are the true lovers on earth. And many wives are starving for attention and affection. If you love her, tell her. Doesn't make you small, makes you ten feet tall. You want happiness in your home, you got to begin with Jesus. Establish the family altar. Pray together. You cannot pray sincerely for your wife and cheat on her. You cannot pray for your wife and not appreciate what she does. Amen. Start with Christ. Oh, please, take me seriously tonight. Women, don't nag your husbands. You only drive them away. If your, attempt, if your uh, idea is to get attention, you're just going to defeat your own purpose. Then try to please one another. Do things together. Amen. If you've got twin beds, save them for company. Sleep together. Wash dishes together. Walk together. Talk together. Pray together. Ride around together. And you need a sense of humor. Will you all pardon me if I take an extra five minutes tonight? You need a sense of humor. Don't take everything so seriously. And don't explode over every little thing that happens. You can de defuse a bomb by laughter. There was a man who loved his wife, but he had a tough job. And he came home uptight. You know what that's like, don't you? And he would often say some things, and a little later on, when he relaxed, he was so sorry. So one day he said to his wife, honey, I really don't mean to do that. It's just that my boss is inconsiderate, and the job is tough, and nobody shows any appreciation, and I get yelled at, and I come home and take it out on you. He said, why don't we work out something? So this is what they agreed on. He said, when I have had a bad day, and I come home, the minute I get out of that car and start up the walk, he said, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm going to take my hat and turn it around backwards. He said, now, if you look out the window and see that, don't start anything. Just give me a few minutes to get myself together and I'll be all right. Now, that's intelligent. Wife said, all right, dear, but let me tell you something. Sometimes these children almost drive me up the wall. 
and the cake falls and the beans burn and everything I try to do works out wrong. Why should I be the present one all the time? So if you come home and I've got my apron around on the side, don't you start anything. It turned out that one day the man had a hard day at the office and he was coming home and he was full up to here and and he came and got out of his car and he pulled his hat around and grabbed his briefcase and he started up the walk and that wife had had a rotten day too. And she wasn't for it. She took her apron and snatched it around on the side and when he got to the door she didn't even wait for him to reach. She snatched it open and there they stood. And you know what they did? Just what you're doing. They both started to laugh and the crisis was gone. Develop a sense of humor in your home. Now I got to give you one more. Have eyes only for her, gentlemen. Lady wrote me a note once and said, when I walk with my husband, he embarrasses me. Everybody that pass, he's looking. Man, don't do that. You humiliate your wife. Have eyes only for her. Compliment her. Tell her when she looks nice. Tell her she needs that. The problem starts when you don't tell her, because if you don't, somebody else will. Tell her when she cooks a good meal and puts a little extra something into it. That's just for you. Tell her how much you like it. You're buying yourself happiness, would you say, man? Remember what I told you already in our message tonight. Let's appreciate our womanhood, and especially when you marry one. She must become the dearest and the best in the home. The wife is to be the queen of the household. Everything revolves around her. Men, I'm not putting you down. I'm a man. I'm telling you what works out best for you. And then that wife will give herself in sacrifice for her husband and her children, just as sure as you're born, one will compliment the other, and happiness breeds in that kind of atmosphere. And angels enjoy a home like that. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37 that by our words, excuse me, we're going to be judged. And in Malachi 2.16, in the Moffat translation, God says, I detest cruelty to a wife. And you can do it without hitting her. The wrong words all the time and always abusing her with words can drive her to the doctor and to the hospital. It is a fact, beloved. Theory is important, but piety and practice is more important. Now, my wife is sitting here tonight, and I couldn't preach to you like this unless you tried to live it at home. It's one thing to talk publicly. It's another thing in the home. Would you say amen? I'm talking about all of us now. We need to realize that something is precious in life. There's something more important than, than, than our own indulgences. And liquor and drugs and foolishness are robbing our homes of what, even of bread. Caught in a whirlpool of death. Wasting our substance and burning out our lives. Looking for what? Happiness. It's at home, man. Go home and find it. And it'll start with you. Hard work doesn't wives. It's working when you're not appreciated. It's not being loved and not being happy. Now, I don't want to sound one-sided. This goes both ways. A good man ought to be appreciated and loved. And you ought to be faithful and kind to him because of his devotion to you. And the secret is love, and you got to start with the love of Christ in the heart. This stuff they sing about in these syrupy, sentimental, saccharine songs is not love, that's lust. they got a term, making love. You can't make love. Love is of God. And then it expresses itself. And I want to tell you something, in my years as a pastor, I've counseled thousands of couples, and the biggest problem is not adultery, it's not fighting, it's not even cursing. The biggest problem I face is where two people live together, they don't plan to separate, they don't cuss one another, they don't even cheat on one another, but they just don't love one another. And they are bored stiff, and it's all dull humdrum.
and they're wondering where the magic went. And they get on one another's nerves. You don't have to live like that.